story when you was called for the first time with the Shadows Group? Well, how it was that uh, I was with the... Um, I'd come to the end of the line, really. I was with a, a singer in England called Tommy Steele. And di I did a tour with him. And um, halfway through that tour, I was with Brian Bennett. And uh, uh, that's when Tony Meehan left the, uh, left the band. And uh, got, they got hold of Brian. And he joined the Shadows, and I carried on with Tommy. But uh, at the end of the tour with Tommy, I was doing nothing at all. And then I get a phone call from Brian uh, to say that Jet was leaving. Would I be interested? So, so I said, uh, yes, I would. But uh, I went to Brian Bennett's house to, uh, to rehearse with Hank and Bruce to check me out to see whether I was good enough. I didn't think I was, actually, but, uh, but it was Bruce that said, OK, you're in. So that's how it started. My life was turned upside down from that day on. This period was uh, one of the best period of the Shallows. You know that uh, your rule was very important at this day. But uh, what do you remember of this day? Well, it was so hectic. The, 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 uh, uh, I didn't realize what I got myself into. First thing was to measure me up for suit. Then uh, that weekend, we, was, we did our first concert uh, in a place called Blackpool on a Sunday night. I borrowed someone's trousers, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> and uh, I didn't know any of the movements, uh, so I just stood there like a lemon. And, uh, and then the next thing, I think, uh, we, uh, we was making the film, Summer Holiday, so off we went to Athens. Then it was one thing after another. Uh, the, uh, you know, the, all the, looking back, all the hits, like Summer Holiday, Guitar Tango, uh, all those, uh, I was only with them for a short time. Well, 18 months, actually. But in all those 18 months, looking back, they were all the golden hits that, they, that they'd made. And, uh, but we didn't have time to think. It was a film here, recordings here, doing a tour there. Uh, first of all, with Cliff and the Shadows. So it's very hard work. Uh, but I must admit, I was very honored and privileged, and uh, I enjoyed every minute of it. One of the best sessions you make is Dance On, I feel so. Well, I remember, um, uh, I remember saying to uh, the sound engineer, his name was Malcolm Addy, and he got a good sound on, uh, on Dance On. Uh, I, uh, I was very, very pleased with that. I told him to sort of bring me up a bit, <laughs> and uh, and he did. You know, I, I, that's the uh, that's the moment that I uh, that I enjoyed. That uh, what I was doing was coming out. But my favourite number. And uh, which one? Was, which uh, are Atlantis. the which are the guitar you use at this day during the session? Which are the guitars? Well, I used this once on Dance On. And Hank and Bruce? Uh, Hank, well, they used the Fenders, you know, their red Fenders. And sometimes, Bruce normally played rhythm on her uh, acoustic. J200? Yeah. And, uh, but we, we had to, uh, if we made a mistake, we had to stop and do the whole thing all over again. <laughs> At time you decide to leave Shadows, why? Well, it was a matter of conscience. Uh, there was nothing wrong in me uh, uh, staying, with the sh staying with the shadows, but I had deep um, religious commitments, which was, uh, it was interfering with my dedicated time that I wanted. So it, ha it came to an issue where it was one thing or another. I had to make a choice according to my conscience. So I, that, that's the reason why, and uh, then I made my decision. I'm not, I've never regretted that decision, but, uh, but looking back, I could have stayed. <laughs> but that's not the way I felt mm -hmm. at that time. So that was the real reason why. Now the shadows are stopped, the music. Marvin goes solo. 
you feel that it's possible that the shadows pick up together for a concert for this day? It would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Uh, in answer to your question, is it possible? I think the answer is yes. But there are so many logistics, so many um, irons in the fire that need to be sorted out. But uh, I think with some gentle persuasion and good organisation, I think it can be done. And I would very much like to have a share in that. You have a very nice instrument with you. Speak about this instrument. <laughs> this one? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I was with Marty Wilde, the singer Marty Wilde and the Wildcats, with Brian Bennett uh, in 1959. And I was playing a, um, a Framus jazz, a Framus bass then, which kept breaking. And so uh, I always wanted a Fender. So I travelled from Bournemouth, I was doing a summer season in Bournemouth, and I travelled uh, by train to Jennings. I'd ordered one, and I got there and it hadn't come in. So I had to, I had to come down twice. But when I got there on the second time, there it was in a big cardboard box. And uh, he brought it out. I thought it was going to be a red one, but it was sunburst. Mm -hmm. But fantastic. How much you paid, do you remember? Well, yes, I do, yeah. It was quite cheap. Oh, well, it wasn't cheap then. But on its own, it was £114. With a case, £160. <laughs>